Alhamdulillah. My first existential crisis happened on my 20th birthday. Not a teen anymore, yet quite not ready to be an adult, I was stuck mid-air. For two decades, I had grown physically, yet I still didn't know my purpose. And I wasn't even exactly sure by what metric I should be measuring my growth, because all of the social construct dictated to me felt so foreign and synthetic. I didn't get my answer for that higher purpose that I was aiming for until two years later when I came upon Surah Luqman. In Surah Luqman, the Quran introduces itself as Hudan lil muhsineen, a guide for the muhsineen. Now, the word husn is very particular. When I did research on it, it doesn't, it doesn't refer just to any good act but it refers to doing the best action in every single moment of your life. Now, in order to do the best action in every single moment of your life, that requires you to internally be constantly conscious of the internal development ongoing in you and how every single action that you are taking is propelling this development forward, right? And then how do we measure this development? I got my answer when I came upon Ayah 20 of Surah Furqan. In Surah Furqan, Ayah 20, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that we created some of you as trials for others. Now what does that tell me? That tells me that this internal development that is happening inside me and that I'm trying to propel forward it's going to show its effects and it's going to manifest when I step into society and start interacting with others. And it is because of this social aspect of development that human development and the growth stages involved are talked, are, has been an area of research for scholars over the centuries. And this research that has been done over the centuries from, from extractions from the Qur'an and Ahadith has brought about seven main milestones for human development. These seven main milestones are under three general categories. The first category is personal growth. This begins from the conception of a human all the way to the maturing of their intellect. The second umbrella stage is social responsibility. It begins with marriage, and it extends onto that human being able to create social roles for others inside society. And by the time we get to the highest stage of wilaya, the person has gained the capacity to not only, to not only lead a whole ummah towards their tawhidi potential, but also to be a forward thinker and think of that ummah's future and how they should start planning for them. So inshallah, today we are focusing on the first stage of personal growth and the three stages that fall under it because our main goal is to, th to think about what are these human development stages and how should our communities start accommodating and adjusting their infrastructures and systems set up to meet the needs of the community members in these different stages so that inshallah we can all reach our potential. So let's hear about the first stage. First stage starts before birth to flourishing us of speech. On average would be the first seven years of life. There will be three goals that should be met during these years. So the first goal is saturating kid with affection, attention and freedom. If the kid is fulfilled during the seven years, later on, uh, the world would be uh, um, like materialistic needs would not be so shiny and the kid would get the chance to think about higher needs such as spirituality. If the kid is not fulfilled during the se first seven years, the kid later will have some holes that would try to fill them with materialistic needs, wouldn't get the chance to think about higher needs. The second goal is to develop the communication and sensory skills. So this is the time to hone all those senses to have a strong person. 
The third goal is exposure of the kid to tayyabat and only tayyabat. It means anything that the kid is going to be exposed to must be pure and good. Anything including the discussions at home, the behavior, manners, anything to eat or watch or hear. So there are some practicalities for this stage. Uh, because the kid has no understanding of abstraction, anything we communicate to the kid should be uh, involving their sensory skills. This is why conditioning in this stage is very important. So if we want the kid to have a good memory of uh, holy places and also be attracted to religious places, we must make sure these places are not boring for them during the first stage. So masjid should not be a boring place. It should be a fun place, a place to have uh, good food and enjoy and play with friends. So we must consider that in our societies. If these goals are not met during the first stage, there will be some consequences. First, the kid cannot be a good communicator. So because he cannot explain what he needs, he will be nagging, frustrated, and angry. The second consequence would be if parents are not playing their role in a good way, the kid will have a bad imagination of wilaya because the parents are their initial wali. So the kid later will have a compromised understanding of ultimate wali, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So next would be the second stage. The second stage starts from uh, when the kid is seven year old until all, almost 14 year old. The second stage is a transitioning between first concrete stage and the third abstract stage. During this stage, kid must become apt. By apt, we mean someone who follows the schedule of his Lord. So in order to be a good follower, kid first must learn what are goods and what are the bads, and then why we should follow do's and uh, don'ts. So this reasoning and critical thinking behind this should be developed during this stage. The second phase of this stage must be scheduling, prioritizing, and understanding how to confront the barriers and uh, lack of willpower to implement those uh, schedules. So some practicalities for this uh, stage. Because we want the kid to have a good reasoning and uh, critical thinking skills, we should uh, implement, uh, we should involve them in as many discussions as possible so that they can practice their reasoning. Also, the next, uh, the next practicality is uh, to involve them in group work because uh, they might know what they needs to be done, but they don't have enough motivation. The group work will give them the motivation and will uh, recompensate the lack of willpower. So, Consequences if these goals are not met for second stage. First, instead of appreciating and valuing do's and don'ts, kid will be despised of them. So this is bad and shouldn't happen. The second consequence, the kid is lacking reasoning and critical thinking skills, so cannot analyze the situations and know what is the best action to be done. The third consequence would be the kid is uh, missing the balance between imagination and action. So they know what should be done, but they don't know how to confront the lack of willpower and how to prioritize them. So now let's speak about the third stage. So stage three is all about the maturing of the intellect. And by this point, the individual has become submissive to religious jurisprudence like praying and fasting and they are, so, are slowly becoming independent and preparing for their social responsibility stage. Practicalities of this stage, some of it is on, in the hands of the individual because they need to involve a lot of self-reflection and again, thinking about their actions and how is it propelling their development forward. But another part of this is on the community. Two, one, provide leadership role for the youth. In this manner, they can understand what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, what are their interests, and it really helps this self-reflection stage as they prepare for their social responsibility role and the vision that they want to have for what that would role would look like. Another thing is as they're doing the skill building, um, there should be networking opportunities for them, there should be uh, professional developments for them, and so, if these don't, things don't happen, what is going to get compromised is their independence, 
their vision for the future, which motivates them, and then that void that is created within them could manifest in them adversely seeking attention from others. However, if this is done properly, then not only the individual benefits from this, but the community as a whole benefits from that individual's presence. And that is why we as a community, sisters and brothers, need to start thinking about these human development stages and how are we going to adjust the systems in our community to meet the needs of our members in every aspect of this. So for example, in our community back in Dallas, we started by realigning our curriculum to meet the standards of this human development stage. For our second graders, what we did is that, for example, when we wanted to teach them Surah to Nas, we didn't just make them memorize and know the meaning. How, instead, one of the activities we did with them is had a competition where they were competing for how many fish each one of them can get. And then afterwards, we had a discussion with them about, OK, what do you think these fish mean? Right? These fish, slowly, we had them reason how they are the good deeds that we need to be competing for. Right? How does this relate to Surah Nas? This is why we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for refuge from waswas al khannas right? And through this manner, they were able to relate with the surah and understand it much better. And alhamdulillah, through this process, our kids have become so much more engaged in Sunday school, and they're understanding the ayahs of the Quran much more better. And inshallah, as you all also join our movement by thinking about what type of workshops are you going to have, and how are you going to align your own Sunday school curriculums? May we all move towards that Tawhidi potential together. Thank you.